So this is one of the first nice days we've had in New York in such a long time and I thought I would walk up to Tribeca and see some of my favorite galleries starting with Postmasters Gallery. And this is a group show titled Eco Spirits and it's about the conflict between man, nature, and technology. And according to the press release, man is the chain between nature and technology, and these works assess our place in the world. In the corner here, we'll get a little closer so you can get a good look. We have some glass blown sculptures by Monica Cook. Really beautiful detail. There are various animals, man wrestling with a dog, a bust. Here we have a work by Hugh Hayden, who's known for transforming everyday objects like the school chair into sort of dysfunctional objects as nature is fighting for survival. So this is a desk that's being overtaken by these spiky twigs. And this is a characteristic feature of his works. And over here, we've got some very interesting objects. We've got some ceramic sculptures by Audrey Dananai. And these almost look like skeleton remains of an alien of some sort. Kind of crazy to think it's ceramic, but it is. And this is my personal favorite of the exhibit. This is another sculpture. I believe it's also by Audrey. Correct me down below if it's not. But this is such an insane replica of ceramic replica of a human, but it's also covered in fur and yeah, the detail is unreal. It's kind of creepy, but I like it. <laughs> And then in the larger room of the gallery, in the very center, we have this incredible work by David Nizio. And David's known for using organic materials and creating sculpture out of them. So here he's carved a hollow tree trunk and it's filled with inscriptions and it's floating so gracefully in the center of this exhibit. I think actually all of the objects on this side of the room at least are all by David. So this glass piece here. And then a really interesting piece coming up that's created of shaved charcoal squares that are formulated into these abstract grids. Now we're just heading a couple of blocks over on White Street to Journal Gallery to see an exhibit. I haven't been to Journal Gallery, honestly, since the Chloe Wise show almost two years ago. This is a solo exhibit by Marco Pariani. And as you could guess by the name, Marco grew up in a small town in Italy. And it wasn't until actually 2019 that he took a huge leap and moved to Brooklyn, New York. And he said, New York City may be one of the hardest places to show who you are, but at the same time, the city gives you huge opportunities. I know I can definitely relate to that. To create these works, he uses oil painting and spray paint on canvas. And you can definitely see some influence from Rothko with this sort of gradation 
These works also remind me a lot of Robert Nava. Yeah, there's not too much information out there about Marco. He's definitely a much more new emerging artist. It's one thing I find so fascinating about journal galleries that they can have anyone from Raymond Pettibone to, you know, a relatively fresh artist right out of the gate. And I find that exciting. I actually think they have a great program and I'd love to know a little bit more about their history and just who they are as a gallery. They're also very... Um, discreet online <laughs> there's not a lot of information about them so if you know any facts about journal gallery let me know Just one street over, we are heading over to James Cohen Gallery now to see a solo exhibit by an Iranian artist, Monir. And this exhibit is not only at this location of James Cohen, but also James Cohen, Cohen's Lower East Side location. So pretty incredible. She's filled both spaces with these insanely detailed glass mirrored sculptures and she's heavily influenced by the intricate geometries of her Iranian heritage as well as classical Persian interior decoration and Western modernism and she creates not only these incredibly detailed mirrored sculptures but mosaics and drawings and textiles and all of these are tied to this mythical understanding of primary shapes as sacred and connected to a divine natural order. Every time I walk over to Canada Gallery, I'm just blown away by how many city bikes are at this dock. If you see on the right here, it just it's like literally four times bigger than any normal city bike docking station. I guess this is just such a popular area, but it just keeps going and going. It's crazy. 
But anyway, back to the art. This is another beautifully bright exhibit. I do apologize for the lighting. As much as I love Canada Gallery, the lighting in this space really drives me crazy. It does not translate well on camera, my iPhone camera or my actual camera that I film on. So I promise you these paintings are much more beautiful to look at in person than I'm capturing right now, but we'll get through it together. So these are works by the German artist Anke Weyer, and this exhibit is titled Heart Heart, and it references the beat and the rhythm of the heart and its ability to endure. And it's also a metaphor for Anke and her works. It requires a lot of large scale gesture and energy to make these, as well as it represents her ability to endure through suffering. She had a severe allergic reaction to oil paint that forced her to begin painting outside, abandoning her studio, and she persevered instead of abandoned her craft. Now we're heading up to Soho to the drawing center and honestly I feel like I've saved the best for last. I was so excited to see this show. It's a solo exhibit by Ibeko Mazumova and yeah I just cannot wait to see what she has in store. I've talked about her before and yeah it's gonna be great. Okay, when I came in, I was so confused because this show is actually down in their basement gallery that I didn't know existed. So I was wandering through like a photography <laughs> exhibit and I was like, where is her show? But here I am and oh my gosh, this is fantastic. So let me back up and give you guys a little bit of a backstory as to what this character is, who this is that you're looking at. And her name is Fatbe, and she is a bold, uninhibited cartoon alter ego that Ibeko has created, and she truly is that. She gets into all kinds of embarrassing 
just insane situations and that's what's captured in these paintings. So this entire exhibit is made up of pen and ink drawings as well as large scale paintings. I think it's said that there are 10 in total. Overall, this exhibit explores the relationship between memory and narrative, the conscious and the subconscious, and most importantly, Fatbe's sense of adventure and self-exploration. She always remains fearless and ready for her next misstep. Thanks for coming along with me. In my next videos, I'm going to be going up to Chelsea to see some incredible exhibits at Hauser & Wirth as well as an exhibit by Robert Nava that I've been looking forward to for so long. So keep an eye out for that next week. See you guys then.